Hello guys and welcome back to another video on artificial intelligence. Well, we need a mathematical background so that we can understand how and why algorithms are structured the way they are. It will be important that you are familiar with all these terms before digging any further into machine learning algorithm. And the set terms are linear algebra, integration, multi-narrative calculus, probability theory, statistics, and gradient. Multivariable calculus, also known as multivariate calculus, is the extension of calculus in one variable to calculus with function of several variables, that is, the differentiation and integration of functions involving several variables rather than just one, a study of limits and continuity in multivariable calculus leads many counterintractive results not demonstrated by single variable functions. In machine learning, a gradient is a derivative of a function that has more than one input variable, known as the slope of a function in mathematical terms. The basic intuition behind gradient descent can be illustrated by a hypothetical scenario. A person is stuck on the mountain and is trying to get down. There is heavy fog such that the visibility is extremely low. Therefore, the path down the mountain is not visible. So they must use local information to find the minimum. They can use the method of gradient descent which involves looking at the steepness of the hill at their current position then proceeding in the direction with the steepest descent, that is, downhill. In this analogy, the person represents the algorithm and the path taken down the mountain represents the sequence of parameter settings that the algorithm will explore. The steepness of the hill represents the slope of the error surface at that point. The instrument used to measure the steepness is differentiation. The slope of error surface can be calculated by taking the derivative of the square error function at that point. The direction they choose to travel in aligns with the gradient of the error surface at that point. The amount of time they travel before taking another measurement is the step size. In summary, we are going to discuss probability theory used to model uncertain events. Depends and interdepends. Depends is what we are going to exploit for estimation. This leads to bypass theory where prior probability matters. Combining texts improves the outcome. As a mathematical foundation for statistics, Probability theory is essential to many human activities that involve quantitative analysis of data. Probability basically refers to find a chance that specific event will occur. Probability is a number between 0 and 1 when it refers to certain condition that event will occur and 0 represents to certainty that the event will not occur. Basic probability can be found by dividing the preferred event by all events. Example, coin flip. The probability of heads is 50%. You may want to understand the basics of probability before moving further on machine learning. Another example of why we should understand multivariable calculus can be understood by knowing bias theorem. Bias theorem is a relationship between the conditional probabilities of two events. For example, if we want to find the probability of selling ice cream on a hot and sunny day, bias theorem gives us the tools to use prior knowledge about the likelihood of selling ice cream on any other type of day, which is for example rainy or windy, snowy, etc. 
let H represent the event that we sell ice cream and E be the event of the weather. Then we might ask what is the probability of selling ice cream on any given day given the type of weather. Mathematically this is written as P where H is equivalent to ice cream, E is equivalent to type of weather which is e equivalent to the left hand side of the equation P bracket open H bracket close. On the right hand side is the expression that is known as the prior because we might already know the marginal probability of the sale of ice cream. In our example this is P H is equivalent to ice cream sale that is the probability of selling ice cream regardless of the type of weather outside. For example I, ca I could look at the data that said 30 people out of the potential 100 actually bought ice cream at some shop somewhere. So my P which is H is equivalent to ice cream sale is equivalent to 30 by 100 which is equivalent to 0 0.3 prior to me knowing anything about the weather. This is how bias theorem allows us to incorporate prior information. Knowing something about the past data will tell us something about the future. That is what machine learning is all about. So knowing E will tell us something about H. A classic use of bias theorem is in the interpretation of clinical tests. Suppose that during a routine medical examination, your doctor informs you that you have tested positive for a rare disease. You are also aware that there is some uncertainty in the result of these tests. On the basis of one test, it is difficult to conclude. If we have more test results, that is likely adding extra observations and that can improve the confidence level on inference of data considerably. That is why it is important to have large data sets in machine learning that will help us develop good algorithms in the machine learning. Our last core competency that matters is linear algebra. Linear algebra is a bunch of mathematics that lets you considerably describe coordinates and interactions of planes in higher dimensions and perform operations on them. As soon as we add additional inputs we get into a higher dimensions if we have two inputs two dimensions three inputs three dimensions some of these algorithms may even have hundreds of inputs why linear algebra it is a foundational field lot of calculus and possibility theory use linear algebra in its formulations also matrix and vectors are how these algorithms are represented as we know in scalar we have just one numerical value vector we are going to have a row of vector or a column vector matrix is scaling that to two dimensions indexing in matrix is extremely important remember that this is just a two dimensional matrix and we are going to get into my higher dimensions in real life Linear operations on data is also good to be aware of. This will help you apply these algorithms effectively. So as a quick summary, the three keys you should know for effective implementation of ML. Multi-narrative calculus as we are working with smoothing problems, optimizing problems, gradient descent, error minimization, we are also doing summations and interrogations. 2. You have to know probability theory as machine learning is based in statistics. So understanding statistics and probability theory is going to help you understand why and how these algorithms are going to be used. 3. 
Finally, linear algebra is necessary as most of the inputs and outputs are actually algorithm structure itself is going to use linear algebra. With this, we come to the end of another session. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do like, share and subscribe and continue to watch our AI series.